Now, I'm joined by James Cleverly, who is one of the four candidates to lead the Conservative Party. James, thanks so much for joining me. I want to start with the latest from the Middle East, because, of course, you are also former foreign secretary. Israel says that it started targeted ground raids in Lebanon. Has Benjamin Netanyahu gone too far? So we have to understand that Israel has been receiving rocket attacks from Hezbollah based out of southern Lebanon for months. When I went to Israel as foreign secretary in the days immediately after the October the 7th atrocities, um, I, I warned the leadership around Israel in the, uh, in the Arab world, and I, I sent the message via intermediaries to, um, uh, you know, through, to the leadership of these Iranian proxy terror organizations that it would be really counterproductive for them to try and further provoke uh, Israel. Clearly, that's exactly what they've done, and Israel has responded. Israel has the right to self-defense, yeah. and, and those rockets have been landing in civilian or aimed at civilian territory in Israel for months. But when has this gone too far? If it becomes a larger and longer term operation, should the UK suspend more arms licenses to Israel or is our support unconditional? No, it's it, what this is about is we've got to recognise the sequencing here. Uh, Israel was attacked by terrorists from Gaza. They then took action to recover hostages and, uh, and, and, and people that had been murdered from Gaza. Hezbollah based in southern Lebanon, nowhere near Gaza, took that as an opportunity to start sending missiles into Israel. The Houthis, based nowhere near Gaza, took that as an opportunity to send missiles into Israel. Israel is now defending itself. I've always said to the Israelis that we support their right to self-defense, and I stand by that. I've always said to the Israelis, to the president, to the prime minister, to the defense minister, they have to do so within the framework of international humanitarian law. But you've got to remember, the rockets came into Israel before Israel sent troops into southern Lebanon. OK, let's turn to your leadership bid now. We're expecting you to say later today that Tories should be fighting for things rather than always appearing to be against change. And for you, that includes being for building more homes. Will you let more migrants in to build those homes? Well, what we should be doing is making sure that we develop skills uh, uh, with British workers. I think vocational training, lifelong training, skills training is absolutely key. Uh, not everyone wants to wear a suit and sit behind a desk. Not everyone not, wants to build homes. Uh, absolutely. But the point is, if we make if we make those really key skills, high status once again, as they once were, make sure that they are well paid, as they once were, there is every reason why um, uh, British people should be in the building trade and proud to be in the building trade. So... Uh, uh, the, our first port of call should not be importing cheap labour. We've done that for far too long. And actually, the OBR now shows us it is not a net benefit to the British economy. So we shouldn't slip down that route again, and I wouldn't do that. But of course, wage inflation is a key concern for the Bank of England with its inflation problem. You also say that you want to cut the cost of childcare. Would you relax those migration rules to let in more childcare workers? No, again, look, we, 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 we can't just keep... We can't just keep going back to the old levers. We have tried and, you know, uh, we were punished by the voters for this. We've, we, as a society, we have slipped into the habit of turning to cheap imported labour to solve all our problems rather than productivity. One of the points I was making about childcare is government intervention through red tape and tax has made it more expensive than in France or in Germany. We then tax working mums in order to subsidise those working mums to pay for the childcare that we made more expensive. It is a nonsense. We should be reducing the cost of childcare, uh, having you know uh, uh, carer to child ratios more in line with our European counterparts, that would bring down the cost rather than having to tax working mums in order to subsidise the process. I suppose I'm trying to work out if you're serious about these ideas or if you're telling people what they want to hear, because you served loyally in the Johnson Trust and Sunak government, so people want to know what you stand for. What is cleverlyism? Well. The so when I was a minister in someone else's administration, I abided by collective responsibility and I would often be the spokesperson for that prime minister. 
I am putting my forward I'm putting myself forward to be the next conservative prime minister of this country so it is now not it's not just appropriate but I am duty bound to set out my vision and And what's that so my vision is a more productive uh, economy Um, we have regulated ourselves to be a less productive economy than many of our international competitors that has got to change we are too highly taxed compared with many of our international competitors that has got to change so less tax less red tape Uh, we've also got to make sure we are properly defended which is why I'm committed to 3% of defence spending and and, and also when I say less tax I don't just mean nibbling away at margins which is really important I want to make sure we send a message both domestically and internationally that Britain is open for business. We're going to build, build, build. We're going to get our economy firing again. We're going to do that by taking the the, the limiters away to unlock potential both in individuals and in British-based businesses. We've got Mm -hmm. to get the energy back, optimism, positivity, but some real energy, and that will attract international investors and support British workers. Just to go back to defence, since you say it's central to your vision, mm-hmm. is the UK government doing enough to extract those British citizens from Lebanon? Well, when I was Foreign Secretary, I changed the travel advice to advise people not to go to Lebanon. The British government has been telling people for weeks they should leave, they should leave Lebanon. The point is... It it may well be, it is quite likely to be impossible to do a facilitated evacuation from Lebanon. This is why we tell people to leave. If people don't leave, we can't guarantee that we can get them out, which is why we told them to leave in the first place. Okay. And you say that economics is going to be at the heart of your vision. I was listening to Liz Truss yesterday. She said she hadn't seen any evidence that any of you running for the Tory leadership really understand why things are so bad for the Conservatives. Is she right? I, look, I, I'm a really good friend of Liz. She was a, a good boss when she was Foreign Secretary. She's not backed you. She's not backed anyone. No, she's not backed anyone. Well, which I understand. None of the former Prime Ministers have uh, backed the leadership candidates, and that makes perfect sense. Um, I don't always agree with Liz, and I don't agree with her on, on this case. I am setting out a very, very clear agenda, which is to ease the tax burden on both businesses and individuals to really get activity back in the UK economy. I want to push for greater productivity, particularly when excessive regulation is stifling that productivity. I want to make sure that we defend ourselves properly. Uh, 3% is uh, an an upturn from where we are at the moment, but 3% on defence is considerably less expensive than going to war. Ukraine is spending 40% of its GDP on defending itself. 3% is cheap and, um, and creating a safe environment is good for British people, good for British business. Was Trump right on NATO? Well, look, I've been advocating that all NATO members spent at least that 2%. Um, I, I, I speak to friends in Eastern Europe who are literally bordering Russia, and they are crying out for all NATO members to spend the 2%, which is a commitment. That Cardiff, that uh, Caris Bay commitment is really, really key. I've always said that. I want to go further. I'm going to spend 3% of GDP on defence. And, you know, you talk about business regulation cutting red tape, and yet there are very few CEOs here. Why do you think they've abandoned the party? Well, uh, I... We've got to recognise that we're not in government anymore. Uh, Of course, people want to influence the party of government. And because we dropped the ball, that is not us. We need to win back the ear of British business, British voters, British people. I know that I am best placed to do that. That is why I am running. And that is why I know I'd be the best leader of the opposition and ultimately take us back into government and become Prime Minister. Do you worry that Kemi Badenoch's comments on maternity pay are going to put women off the party? Well, they they shouldn't. This uh, This is a party that has had not one, not two, but three female prime ministers we promote on merit Uh, i very much uh, and i've made this point i really value the embedded talent in uh, working women and those who want to go back to work should be able to do so Uh, the cost of childcare, as i say is putting a lot of them off that's what i want to tackle so that everyone in society whether you're a parent or not can 
play an active part in the economy and that will remain a priority for me. But just finally, some of the briefing against Kemi Badenoch has been pretty toxic. Are you, Tom Tugendhat and Robert Jenrick, colluding against her? No, 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 no. I, I've made it absolutely clear in my campaign right from the start that we would run an optimistic and positive campaign. I said anyone in my team involved in Blue on Blue is off the team. No yellow card, no second chance, you're off the team. I intend to campaign as I intend to lead, as I intend to govern, which is by putting the best foot forward, being optimistic, promoting my values and my ideas and not talking down any of my friends because every single one of these other candidates is not just a colleague, but also a friend. The manager. James Cleverly, Shadow leader, Home Secretary. The <laughs> well, hoping to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Good to join you in Birmingham. Thank you. Thanks very much.